Welcome back 4900 students. During this week's episode, we will be comparing and contrasting endpoint PCR and qPCR. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at what happens during a PCR reaction. There are three phases of a PCR reaction. The exponential, linear, and plateau or endpoint phases. The reaction dynamics are the same regardless of whether you are completing endpoint or quantitative PCR. But the phase during which PCR products are measured and the way PCR products are analyzed are different. In the exponential phase, the product or amplicon doubles with each cycle. Real-time or quantitative PCR takes measurements during this phase. In later cycles, around cycle 30 to 35, the reaction enters a linear and plateau phases where there may be depletion of critical reagents such as DNTPs. This slows down and eventually stops PCR amplification. PCR products can also begin to degrade. If you're running multiple replicates, the depletion of key reagents can occur at different rates, ultimately resulting in different quantities of PCR products between samples at the plateau phase. The plateau region is where the endpoint PCR takes measurements. Following a reaction, endpoint PCR uses agarose gels to visualize and determine the size and relative quantity of PCR products. The use of agarose gels can be a time-consuming process. Endpoint PCR relies on size discrimination and can be used to estimate relative quantity. One limitation is that agarose gel resolution is poor and only enables discriminations between about 10-fold variances. In contrast, qPCR can detect a two-fold difference. As a result, endpoint is mostly used for detecting the presence or absence of a target. Endpoint PCR is used for applications such as cloning, genotyping, sequencing, and sequence detection. In qPCR, the products are continuously detected throughout reaction cycles by intercalating or probe-based fluorescent dyes. The fluorescent signal produced from these dyes increases proportionately as PCR product increases. In our protocol for today's lab, we'll be using the CyberGreen Supermix Kit, which uses a dye that binds to the minor group of DNA and emits fluorescence. qPCR is far more accurate in quantifying PCR products than endpoint PCR. Using a standard curve generated by amplifying known amounts of standard DNA, the quantity of DNA can be determined from the cycle number at which the unknown DNA is detected relative to the control DNA. qPCR applications include gene expression, gene profiling, copy number variation, molecular diagnostics, and genotyping. Real-time PCR provides fast, accurate, and precise results. Two key advantages of qPCR are that it is more accurate for DNA or RNA quantification, and it does not require post-PCR methods that can be time-consuming. Here's a quick summary of what we've covered in today's lesson. Best of luck with today's lab!